I'm Leah, introduce yourself to us. My name is Amler Clark. I'm a photographer and filmmaker. I specialize in portrait, corporate, and brand photography. And I work in film in various roles, um, most recently as fixer and production coordinator for international projects that come into Barbados. Your, your two main things are photography and film. Which one started first and did one dovetail into the other? Photography came first, but even before that, I was always into the arts. I used to start hit ballet since I was three, and I was always into visual arts. I loved to doodle, and I did CXC in art and cape in art as well. And it was during that time that some of my classmates were doing photography as part of their cape projects for art. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. It seems accessible, like something that I can do. I always like to take little snapshots of my friends and you know put together albums. And you know, just seeing people do it with more more professional camera um, made me feel like, yeah, maybe I, I can learn that. So I started learning photography just before I went to university, and I fell in love with it. Really, um, I did short courses, I did lots of different programs, even ones with the NCF. Always used to go to the NIFCA exhibits and love seeing. You know, I was really inspired by the creatives in Barbados as well as internationally. And so I started in photography and then, but it was always my intention f to do film as well. The first DSLR that I got, um, the first proper photography camera that I got was one of the first Nikons that also did video because it's my intention to always learn video. But it seemed a bit harder, a bit more accessible. So it took me a couple of years first learning photography because it was more accessible. I was able to meet more people doing it and then gradually started learning film and working on with different production companies locally and getting more exposure into the industry as well as some short courses and different programs. <laughs> so your journey <coughs> is has been centered around art, your artsy individual. How does that resonate with Amla, the person? How, how has that impacted on you as an individual? Um, I think there's so many ways. I mean, the, the obvious and primary ways because it is my main form of income. Um, I am a full-time photographer and then I freelance um, in video as well. So the, the number one way is it's been the economic empowerment to be able to not just earn money from, from photography and film, but to enjoy doing it and to really have a, something that's not just a job, but a vocation, a passion that I can earn money with and serve people with and create a positive impact in my life and other people's lives. But in other ways, it's also like, it's really developed my way of seeing the world. Um, I definitely feel like all forms of art, but for me, especially visual arts, um, has developed my way in terms of seeing how it's helped me learn and just see things in different ways. Art and visuals, they transcend um, communication in ways that words could not. Um, and just learning, studying it, and just experiencing and seeing how people see how what I create of them. I do a lot of portraits. Um, how it can inspire people, how it can empower people, how people can learn <laughs> about it um, really does, um, I think definitely, <laughs> I'm babbling, but I would definitely say that the ways, um, it's about my way of seeing the world and how people communicate and the power of art in terms of changing our society as well as empowering ourselves. You, as far as the photography is concerned, you, you have a niche, like you like portrait stick. What, when you're behind the camera, what do you prefer? I've dabbled in all sorts of, um, all the genres, <laughs> really. I've done a bit of everything. I would say I specialize with portraits and brand photography. And even with the brands, I work for a wide range of local brand, well, local and regional international brands. And learning and everything that I've done in terms of thinking quickly on my feet for event photography, wedding photography, um, working with high-end clients, as well as small startups, the real estate, um, fine art photography, everything I encompass into the, when I'm working with brands. Um, because you wanna be able to, I love being able to work with concepts as well as things that might already exist, but being able to communicate that in different ways. Um, and especially in today with social media and you know a very, crowded marketplace, um, being able to help 
brands and individuals because personal brands as well to be able to really showcase their special sauce their value and to be able to showcase that in imagery and things that are not just um, hey look buy my stuff but this is this is the community that we're cultivating this is the value that we're bringing to you this is how we can service you but to put that in visuals is what i love I specialize with portraits and brands um, and then with filmmaking it's with brands as well. Um, I have my own business, I'm the clerk photography and recently Sunkist Studios which is for more comprehensive content creation and that would include the video as well as graphic design and copywriting and everything together to really help brands. But um, I also, over the last few years, have been doing a lot more work in production coordination. So I freelance with different production companies, most recently Parachute Film Studios. And for them, I've worked with international crews that come into the island and they need assistance to be able to showcase whatever they're showcasing. They want to film in Barbados and we assist them with that. So production coordination has been the specialty that I've also been developing along the way as it relates to film. Nice. You're smiling each time you talk about your endeavors, either in film or in photography. But ha have you ever encountered a really rough or challenging period where you might have said to yourself, I am not sure I want to continue, or you felt really, really defeated? And uh, how did you pick yourself up and go again? Yeah, I think it's, there's definitely been challenges. Um, photography in Barbados can be very competitive um, and art any sort of art can be very subjective. So some, you know, you're not meant for everyone. You're not always aligned with everyone and me. And so, you know, there's definitely been times where, you know, I've worked on projects that probably wasn't the best alignment for me or the client. Um, and it's been, and also in society as well, there's many people that dissuade me from doing photography. I actually did law at university. So people were like, you're doing photography? Like I had two sets of people. One set of people is like, oh my gosh, that's great, follow your passion. And then the other set of people are like, why are you doing that? <laughs> I've even had photographers that I've, you know, worked with and assisted that's like, yeah, don't, don't get into photography full time, right? And I mean, it, it can be challenging. And there are sometimes reasons why some people shouldn't take something that's their passion and make it their business. Um, but I've been able to work through that, those challenges because of the inspiration that I've had. Um, I've always been a continuous learner and there's so many inspiring photographers and producers in Barbados and internationally that have inspired them and just seeing that representation um, of other women who are trailblazers, who are go-getters and who have, despite being from a small town or you know not having a lot of money, because it can be expensive getting the equipment, um, they've still been able to make it work with what they had and to be able to provide a really valuable service and be able to find that alignment with the clients and so therefore find the alignment with the people that they're meant to serve so i you know i think those are the ways that i've been able to push through those challenges as well as my faith um, and you know meeting some great friends and people along the way would you care to let to talk a bit about some of the influences in your life especially feminine influences in your life yes um i've there's been so many supportive um there have been so many people that have been so supportive in whether it's through just them doing what they do that's inspiring me or you know giving me a chance, um, helping me work on different projects. Um, in terms of feminine in um, influences, of course it's my mom <laughs> and my aunt. Mm -hmm. um, but outside of like, but, but professionally, my first internship after I graduated was with Eilenista Magazine run by Amanda Lynch Foster. And that was an amazing experience, seeing someone who has their own full-time career, but also having like this amazing side hustle that was so empowering and you know going regional. Um, and she has such vision um, for every project that she's done. And you know her giving me a chance to take do photography, do help her with the coordination, as well as my first cover on a magazine was amazing um, and just being able to see the way that she worked um, and be able to for me to have that chance to be able to get an inside look into running a business you know running a side hustle whilst also you know running a family having a career it was really inspiring for me um, 
like one of the first internships I did have as a studio studio, which is a husband and wife team, Carl and Paulette Blandman. Um, and, you know, Paulette has always been a great inspiration to me. She's always been so encouraging. Also one of the inspirations for me to get my sister locks <laughs> as well. And it's just seeing, like, having that opportunity to work in the studio, um, work on jobs outside, and they hired me again for summers afterwards has, was definitely very inspiring. And there are also two producers that I work really closely with in terms of for film. So um, there's Kerry Birch from 13 Degrees North, and I just after I'd done a product, I'd done a film course at the university, and that's how I met her. And working with them, they brought me on in different projects, and gave me lots of different responsibilities that helped me. You know, like sometimes I was like, I'm not sure if I'm even ready for this, but to step up to the plate. And then even more recently now, Sana Alsa from Parachute Film Studios is has been an amazing inspiration for me and also given me so many different opportunities that I also didn't think I was ready for. And so sometimes having those people who are hiring you and giving you that push that really believe in you, um, giving you responsibilities and seeing what you can do, sometimes you don't see it in yourself. And so there's that aspect and then just them with their own projects as well. Um, Sana's doing an amazing project that should be released soon um, for you know, a Beijing film, for a Beijing series that's unlike anything that we've seen before and just shopping it and it's winning international awards right now. And to just be able to see people take this idea and to be able to create it and to be able to see the inner workings to get to work with them closely has been an amazing inspiration for me, for sure. Lovely. And so, and <laughs> I definitely, this is why I always believe that representation matters. And for me, like, um, people who know me will also know, like, probably like 80% of my assistants, my photo assistants are female because there's not as many female photographers and um, videographers, especially on the commercial side in terms of photography. And so having that representation matters. Sometimes I don't like to be in front of the camera as much, but I do think it's important. And to be able to give people those opportunities, um, has been always so important to me and I see the value in it. I benefit, benefited from it and I want other people to be able to as well. Very selfless. Picking up from there, I guess I'll go home with my final question where you said you feel, I don't say obligated, but the sense to help other females in the area. Mm -hmm. It's a male dominated area. You're a female, you're a young female. How have you pushed through, how have you allowed yourself not to be sidetracked with any kind of gender imbalance or gender, you know, issues. How has that been for you and on what advice you would give to another young lady looking to pursue a photographic career? So I would say very much there is an aspect of photography and film where it's very, you know, more male dominated, but there are quite, there are a lot of still female examples. Um, but even for just anybody, as you said, as a young female to develop into photography, I would say don't let anybody else's preconceptions concern you. Um, I would say find your strength as well. And this is for anybody as well, um, because there are sometimes people try to mimic people too much. They're like, okay, I need to have lighting like that, what camera are you using? But also kind of finding what is mm -hmm. the strengths that you have. Many of the female photographers that I know, there's so many female, some of the reasons that, or should I say, one of the reasons that people, let some of my clients hire me is because I'm a female photographer. They want to have that more, maybe a more feminine touch. They want someone that could under, Stand some things that are more related to females or they may feel that I'm more detail oriented or more considerate or affectionate or more I don't know some of the soft skills as well learn how to be yourself find your own mm -hmm. strengths and the different everybody we're all similar but also unique everybody has their own characteristics and personality and people don't just hire a photographer or a filmmaker or it's so much about relationships as well. It's not just about, obviously you need to be able to know your craft, you need to develop those skills, but also your personality, your way of doing things, even just in terms of customer service, um, the way that I have my systems, my onboarding for my clients is all part of the experience that helps them feel more comfortable, empowered and prepared for their shoots. So having, you know, 
So the things that whether you're female, male, LGBTQ, whatever, however you identify, um, just find those things that you're good at, finding those skills and lean into that and not be looking too much at what everybody else is doing, I would say. Um, focus on you. Yeah, focus on you, focus on you and, and don't feel limited. Um, Leah, thank you so much for joining us and you're thank welcome. you for your time and your inspirational story on your photographic and film journey. We at the NCF take this opportunity to wish you all the very best. Thank you. In the future. <laughs> okay.